Guys, welcome back to another episode of We Don't Need Roads. My name is Chris, and with me this week, he is back. He is Brian. Hi. How you doing, Brian? How you feeling? Much, much better this week. Much, much better. Good, good. We truly did miss you on the last episode. have another guest this week and we have to say guys we won't have a guest every week but we've just been so fortunate that everyone who we've approached to uh, be a part of the show so far has said yes so we've had a guest every single week so this week ladies and gentlemen do me the greatest of honors and help me welcome the one the only Vila a princess hello Welcome. Well, welcome, Vila. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Good, good. I'm playing with this little thing that came from Hubby's work. It's one of those oh. little bubble poppers. <laughs> little fidget toy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't tell my kids. They'll be begging you for it. Um, yeah. It's from NVIDIA. <laughs> very nice. So, guys, uh, for those who don't know who Vila Princess is, she is a Twitch streamer. She is a content creator. And she is one of our closest friends uh on the other side of the pond uh vila why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do on your twitch stream um so usually you can find me playing fallout 4 because i can't get enough of that game apparently um i'm always either building in it or doing different types of runs um there's times when i'll ask my chat what they want to do like oh do we want to go with the brotherhood of steel or do we want to go with the minutemen and do we want to zap the skippy which is one of the <laughs> it's a nickname for one of the people in one of the um dlcs uh you like make him ride a bike and then he gets zapped and he just kind of flies off the bike it's very entertaining that's the vault one isn't it that's the... yeah that's the vault 88 yeah clem is the character's name but one of my my moderators uh, gave him the nickname of Skippy, so we say Zap the Skippy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also do, you know, other things. I like playing Sims, Creativeverse, um, Seven Days, sometimes Arc. Um, not too many Seven Days Arc streams, but I have a lot of hours in there. Um, but I do play with friends sometimes, um, and. I do a lot of crafting, actually. This blankie, this gray one right here, um, I'm doing for a commission right now. It's it's for a cow king bed. It's very big. <laughs> um, it's about halfway done, and it's um, supposed to be. So, um, trying to think of centimeters, how long this would be, but. Um, in feet, it's supposed to be about nine feet by nine and a half feet plus a border. So it's really big and it's about four feet long so far. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very big. That, is, that, is that, very... that box has all the yarn in it. The yarn, there's 30 skeins of yarn that I bought. Wow. Um, I've gone through about half of them already. So it's a, it's a lot. And I, I just do a lot of stuff, you know, variety. Um, sometimes I'm coloring, sometimes I'm cross stitching. Um, so you can, you can definitely say that you are a variety streamer. You're not like just down onto one set of games or, you know, yeah, like that. it's what I'm feeling. You know, I've played, I love horror games, but if you come to my stream, I will scream if <laughs> something jumps out at me. 
my husband loves to scare me when I'm playing horror games. And um, so I have red rope lights and then I have a little like lamp right here so you can see my face for reactions. But the rest of the room is dark and he'll like come up in a weeping angel mask and he'll scare me <laughs> or a clown mask and he'll scare me. So Someone crept up behind me in a clown mask. They, they I, I would punch them if they made me jump. I'd just, it'd be an instinct thing because I am petrified of clowns. Oh, I hate clowns. And it's like a creepy, like scary clown mask. <laughs> like, scary. I don't even, uh, it's just. See, that, 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 that is something else that all three of us actually have very much in common. And I know we've spoken about this as a group before and individually before. We are all very much big Doctor Who fans. Yes. Yes. I don't so, have anything close to me that's Doctor Who. Brian except does. Except for maybe... I have a pen. A little TARDIS pen right here. Uh, yeah, my we, sonic screwdriver is in the other room. Yeah, the, the closest thing I have to hand is my steampunk Doctor Who esque. Oh, clock. that's so cool! That is really, really Which cool. Which actually does. I don't know if you can see it very well. On yeah, the it looks. Camera. It looks like uh, Gallifreyan. Yeah, it does actually turn. Um, so yeah, that is you know obviously another thing we have in common. Um, I know uh, Brian. You, me and you have spoken uh, about the upcoming change to Doctor Who. Vila, have you been able to catch any of the news? No, I haven't. I haven't. Not that I don't want to. I just, um, around the time when the Doctor changed to female, um, that was around the time of my shoulder surgery, so I actually didn't watch a lot of tv like i did but i didn't i slept a lot of time um but i just haven't gotten around to it um it's on my to-do list so i don't know what's changing in doctor who currently um well let's the last i was gonna say let's yeah, have the, the 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 resident expert mr brian he'll give you the quick rundown of what's what's changing okay, okay, well, okay. The, next, the next series is one story split into six episodes. So kind okay. of Torchwood Children of Earth series they did. Mm -hmm. um, but then at the end of that, we're getting a few specials. And then so like, like the Easter special and the Christmas one? Yeah, and then I think it, it'll be all coming into the 60th anniversary when Russell T. Davis comes back as the showrunner. Oh. Um, for the 60th anniversary, but at the same time, we're meant to get a regeneration as well because Jodie's leaving. Yeah. So I don't know if she's going to be if she's contracted for the 60th. It'd be kind of weird going into the 60th anniversary with with a brand new Doctor. Yeah. From what I've heard, from what I've what I've read online and with the sources that I've uh, been going to, um. The Jodie has filmed her regeneration. Okay. That it has been done. She she has now officially finished all of her contracted Doctor Who story. Okay. She's she's now done and dusted. But from unofficial sources, but through the grapevine, from what I'm hearing is uh we will not be getting christopher eccleston back for the 60th um but by all accounts all remaining doctors are up for it take that oh. as you will <laughs> you know whether they do or don't went into the 50th at one point matt smith wasn't even contracted for the 50th anniversary yeah. So they were, they were going to do a story based around Clara. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting times. It's it's a, it's it, it'll, you know new doctor coming in, new you know a new old showrunner. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping Russell T Davis is going to give it that um, finesse that we had with Eccleston and Tennant. You know we're we're going to get the 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 long story arcs back. So stuff that happens in episode one is going to be relevant to the last episode of the series you know 
Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm hoping we're going to get that back. And I'm sort of hoping that these six episodes that we're going to get with Jodie before she regenerates is going to be in the same style. But I do have to say, I'm very, very interested on classic Centaurans coming back. Oh, really? Yeah, they've re the makeup to make it look like it did in the in the seventies, seventies yeah. and eighties. So yeah, yeah. that's a bit. It was a bit jarring seeing it in the in the trailer, but yeah. at the same time, it's like it looks good, you know. And then, I, I like the Sontarans. Well, I like Strax. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I think everyone likes Strax. <laughs> It's uh, it, it's definitely going to be interesting. And I know for a fact that we are going to be covering Doctor Who as and when uh, we do the shows um, whilst it's on. So it'd be great to have you back at a later date, Bela, so we can catch up and you guys yeah, you I'll can have give to us give us the, watch um, it. the American <laughs> experience of these last um, set stories right. but i think so guys going straight into category one upcoming technology now this can be anything um i, I picked this purely because there's some very weird and wonderful things in the world right now with regards to technology and um i just wanted to know if you if you guys had heard of any upcoming technology that was sort of weird and wonderful or interesting um because i definitely have some on my list that i'm I'm looking at it and I'm like, uh, uh, that's I a lot. I did see something about Ray-Ban Facebook glasses that have I, camera on them. I'm literally <laughs> looking. I, 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 I'm looking at the same article right now. I, I purposely saved these. I was <laughs> like, I saw these and I was like, what? Now we all know. Now everyone out there. And everyone here knows that Ray Bans are expensive glasses at the best of times. Like they're not cheap. But so these new Ray Bans. These are basically designer Google Glass, but with for Facebook. Yeah, they're so, they're yeah. sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, so they're sunglasses. They're the first generation sunglasses that have basically got um at the moment they're very much limited to camera. facebook yeah it's got a camera on the lens like literally on both corners i'm looking at the photo so there's, there's a camera on the corner the frames. yeah on the frames on the corner of your eyes um and as it stands at the moment they are uh facebook integrated but that ray-ban have other companies interested in joining the franchise they're not a vr headset uh but they are completely a... so you could basically have a conversation with someone on facebook via messenger and they can see what you're seeing and you can yeah, see yeah. them on your lenses right i I'm, I'm i'm a bit worried about this because I, I, when I was in a relationship with someone, her pet name for me was Baby. So she put that in all her messages. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, she, like a few days later, she mentioned all the stuff popping up in her suggested news feed. Oh. Baby related. Yeah. I'd only be wearing these glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and Facebook seeing everything I'm seeing. I mean, wearable tech is cool. I've always said that. I, I yeah. think if, it, if it's done right, it's great, you know. Back to the Future 2 with the glasses, video calls, and all that stuff. And Black Mirror. <laughs> I've, I've only ever seen about two episodes of Black Mirror. The first one oh. put me off. The first... Oh, the first one is so bad. Just skip the first one. Just... Everything after that is so much better. That one, oh my god, the first episode, everyone is like, I heard about the first episode. It's like, just just skip the first episode. You don't need, you don't need to watch it. <laughs> you don't. Don't watch so it. The... But everything else is really good. <laughs> what about the glasses? If you've got the privacy settings right, the privacy is there, then they'd be really cool. Bearing in mind they're Ray-Bans. Bearing in mind that they are wearable tech. Bearing in mind that they have two HDR cameras in them. I'm going to have to get a mortgage to remortgage to buy them. 
<laughs> give me a rough guess in dollars. Uh, seven hundred thirty-five. Brian, I was I was, was going to say between seven and nine. Currently, um, their official price tag on launch will be two hundred and ninety-nine dollars. Oh, that's not too bad. Because Facebook have basically waived the rights for the financial part of their software in the Ray-Bans. I see. For the first year. <laughs> see if it takes off or not. Yeah. Here you go. Here's a set of sunglasses for $299. Only problem is, after a year, they may not fucking work. <laughs> but you'll have cool glasses for two hundred yeah, yeah. quid. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, with cameras in, and if you could act, if you could just use them to take your pictures and access them on your mm-hmm. devices, that that be you know you take them on holiday with you. You don't have to worry about you yeah. getting your phone out in public and stuff like that. But now, what about people who like have prescription glasses? Like, I have to drive with my sunglasses on. I need prescription sunglasses. Are they gonna do that? That's, These are the questions a, I need to know. <laughs> yeah, that that is a very valid question because there is a lot of people who have prescription sunglasses or reactive lenses, and mm-hmm. you know if Ray Ban aren't going to be producing reactive glasses or are not going to be producing them in certain um, Prescript. prescriptions, then there's going to be no good for people who have sunglasses or have glasses. They're limiting mm-hmm. their um, their market, limiting their customer base. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. Um, now this one is a little bit older, um, but I still want to bring it up because just saying that Brian said earlier about privacy. I th- I think that this sort of goes on the same um, the same thing. Now everyone knows, especially anyone who's watched the previous couple of episodes. I am a massive Apple nerd. The Apple Air Tags. The air Bri- oh the air tags yes I've heard of those um, Brian you look me- confused hubby we're talking about those uh, basically so do you know what the <laughs> tile is do you know what the little tile uh, it's called tile it's like a little you can put them on your keys and if, it's got GPS in it so if you lose your keys you can ah, find your right. keys yeah um it's basically like that um. But I don't see, I mean, my tile is dead. <laughs> we got them from uh, Hubby's work. He works with computers. So he gets a lot of weird swag that they send him. Um, and uh, we both had one, but um, basically when, when the tile dies, you have to buy a new one. <laughs> There's no charging it. There's no, like, see, reactivating that, that, it. <laughs> that's the thing with the Apple ones is they are char- rechargeable. Um, if you've got an Apple Watch, you can use the same ring uh, connector. Or if you have any generic uh, contactless charger, you can charge them on them. For those, so yeah, the Apple AirTag. So it is literally a little round disc like that uh, mm-hmm. with an Apple logo, and it has you know like on the back of all Apple products, it's like made in California, designed by Apple, blah 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 blah. It's got that and yeah, then yeah. the Apple logo. And basically, you, you you can buy these little straps so you can attach it to your bag, you can attach it to pretty much fucking anything, really. Or you can just have the, the actual little air tag and put it in your pocket. Mm-hmm. My, put it in your wallet. Yeah, put it in your wallet. <laughs> um, my only concern with it is apparently you can't track people with it, which I think is bull. Because if the GPS receiver, yeah, it doesn't matter who it's receiver, on. If you, if you put it on your on your say your in your cat's collar or something like that, sure you'll be able to. Yeah. yeah, they make they make uh GPS tags that you can put on like the collars so that you can find them. Yeah. Um, because the chip is not a tracker; it's just so that you you know find a dog scan the chip yeah or the cat and it's just like oh this owner was the last owner that registered this chip so but um yeah it, it just it, it could it, be used for 
They could be used for quite nefarious means. Yeah. Yeah. People would slip it in people's bags in the airport. Like, go be sleazy, sneak. Yeah, like stalkers, yeah, <laughs> stalkers, and it. Like, I, I, I don't want to dwell on the negative side too much. I just wanted your opinions on how do you mm-hmm. feel about these products being in the world, whether it be Apple Air tags or uh, tiles. Because I know there's a new generation of tile out, and they're they're constantly up updating their stuff. So. I think um, it's yeah. the same with with all technology. If it's used for the right reasons, it, they can be brilliant. You know, I'd, I'd Caden, he's got his own phone. I've got that link to mine, so mm-hmm. I can go on Google Maps and I can see where he is. You know, if he's out playing with his friends or whatever, I can see that he's in the, you know he's not gone out of where he's allowed and and whatnot. I think the applications for it, uh, it could be very useful. Let's say, um, you know, you're waiting to see this happened to us actually um we were waiting in the airport after we got back from uh from oregon um and i am a slow walker i use a cane um so uh we were walking you know to the baggage claim area and um we were sitting there waiting but like (laughs) it said that all the bags had been distributed and um we were like, well, where's my bags, which are purple, because naturally I must have purple everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, like there, there's a there was like a, a room kind of in the corner of where the baggage claim was. And like our bags were over there because they had pulled them off of the the spinny thing already. But like if. If they weren't there, you know, you could track it, see if someone grabbed the wrong bag. Um, you know, Check you know, your phone and see they're in a hole. Try in a hole of a state. <laughs> yeah, see if they've like sometimes people's baggages go on the wrong plane, so then you have to like wait and uh, have it you know delivered to you later. And I think that would be really helpful, especially for people who travel a lot um, uh, via plane or other things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, personally, I, th- I think it's a good idea as long as it's used correctly. As long as it's used properly, then yeah, I think it'd be a good idea. I just, I, I, I do feel worried for the people who don't know that they've got an air tag in in their bag or whatever. Um, but apparently, the the there's, the, I was reading the report on it after they announced them, and it was something like, if you get more than like an x distance away from the air tag the 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 air tag starts vibrating or something or it it basically your phone goes ballistic going you're not with this item where where are you what's going on (laughs) um so yeah like if if they've put precautions in there then yeah great if they haven't then shame on you apple yeah well i was gonna say it um a good application <laughs> would be uh, leave the thing in your car when you like park at a big parking area. <laughs> then you just be like, "Oh, I'm over there." <laughs> but if the phone constantly is buzzing, that yeah. will drain your battery on your phone, so that yeah. may not work. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, just a rough guess, <laughs> how much in U.S. dollars? Apple tag a hundred. Yeah, I was going to say, I I think around the 100 mark because it's not got a screen on it or anything like that. They can't be that expensive to produce, but with it being Apple, you're going to put the mark up on it. I mean, the tile, when you get a replacement, is about $35, $40 after tax. So You can currently buy Apple AirTags on Amazon for $29. Oh, nice. That is Brian's face pretty much explained it. When I first saw it, I went... The one now, <laughs> like, by like six. <laughs> I was like, so if I buy twelve of these, they them into all my kids' coats. <laughs> <laughs> but at thirty dollars, that's not a bad price. But you literally get the air tag. That's it. There's there's mm-hmm. no, um, 
as from what I've heard, there's no like fancy packaging or anything. It comes in like a little box, and you get you you don't shock horror. The one person I, I was watching a guy unboxing these, and the one thing he said, "I bugger everything else." There's no fucking Apple stickers. I was like, <laughs> get a grip. The Atari Tempest Legacy Edition Arcade. Oh, is it by Arcade 1-Up? Is it a cabinet? It, it is an Arcade 1-Up. It is by Arcade 1-Up. I loved, I, I've, I've seen so many of them. The one I want to get is the Turtles one mm -hmm. with the four, because it's got the four players. Yeah. But, and I've, I've only seen one or two um in the wild over here yeah um one was in a local pawnbrokers it was i think it was street fighter yeah um but they they are really good because they're not quite full size but, but they're close enough and most of them come with the riser so you can have it a bit higher if you want to they they are really i mean you've got to build them yourself as well yeah so that's another reason why i'll probably not get one because <laughs> you, can, you know you know I'll drop the screen or something like that or wire it up wrong. But the, the one thing I've noticed about these, and I've seen a lot of them, um, is they all have the, the coin part. So if you want to, I think there's a switch inside. If you want to put it as you have to put money in, you can set it so you have to put money into play. I think it's just absolutely amazing. I, I, I absolutely love these. That sounds um, really cool. <laughs> but for for because Brian is very much a retro game lover. If, if if there's a retro game, he's probably played it. That, that, oh, you know, nice! <laughs> handheld Atari console. Like you can't beat retro more than that. <laughs> um, Playing Pac-Man for the twenty six hundred while we were waiting to set up tonight. Worst Pac-Man port ever. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so. <laughs> So we're talking arcade machine, basically. It is pretty much as close to a arcade machine that you can buy. How much mm -hmm. do you reckon we're talking, Brian? Oh, I think these are aren't these around like they're a few hundred dollars. I don't. It depends on the unit. There's different ones cost different amounts because there's ones with steering wheels. And, yeah. Well, this is this, this is just the, the one that I've got here is the Atari Tempest. So it's the game is Tempest legacy arcade uh a legacy edition arcade by arcade one up it should, so, it should have a, a few more games on it as well uh, you only bundle a collect I'm, I'm gonna i don't know i can't I, I honestly don't know how much that one would be really give me a guess uh, you're basically buying hard. an arcade machine uh i say uh, 1500 Okay. Brian, no guess? No, I don't have a problem. You can buy these at Wayfair for $450. Well, I'm they... always wrong. That's why I can't <laughs> be on the prices right. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, there, there, there is some really, really good technology coming out. And, you know, there's, I think we've got to the point in the in, in, our, in our life cycle now where technology is almost catching up to what our expectations were back in the 80s, 90s and 2000s. You know, I keep seeing all these little TikTok videos about the Simpsons predicted this and the Simpsons predicted that or... <laughs> Or this TV show predicted this. It's like no, we 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 naturally, in our imaginations, thought about this back in the seventies and the sixties and the, and in the eighties. You know, it's just now we're we're coming to the point where we can physically make what we were dreaming about 30, 40 years ago. The category of Twitch versus YouTube. Now this is. Uh, this was this category was specifically designed for this episode because we all have twitch history <laughs> we all have some form of youtube history whether it be content or just watching content on youtube mm -hmm. where do we all stand with the current state of twitch and the current state of youtube well, for me, YouTube at first was always just something to watch. 
programs that I couldn't watch over here, mm-hmm. like the WWE and stuff, and watching it in little 10, 10 minute breakdowns, reverse to get around copyright laws and all that stuff. Yeah, and I started yeah. finding proper content creators that I that clicked with me, like movie reviewers, game reviewers, um, the BuzzFeed Unsolved guys. They're watching, very good. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I, could, I can't watch live streams on there that much because it, it there's not as much interaction. You can't. It, it doesn't feel when I'm watching someone playing a game on YouTube. It 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 seems the chat seems to be very very behind what's mm-hmm. going on. So you re, you type something that reacts to the, you react to the game, and then by the time the stream the stream has actually got it, they're like, what what what? Because I know that happened a few times when you were streaming, yeah, uh, Chris. And with Twitch, yeah. I, I don't class myself as a Twitch streamer. I'm just somebody when I stream, I feel in the mood for streaming, I stream on Twitch. I, I managed, I don't know how to get to affiliate. I don't know how I managed that. Streaming like three times a month or whatever it was. And then I hit <laughs> it hard for a month. And I was offline one day, got the email. I was like, hey, I'm an affiliate. Um, Twitch, for me... There's more of a community. You can build a community a lot easier, I think, and people mm-hmm. know them when you're on when that they come into your stream. What to kind of what to expect, what what type of humor and stuff like that. Um, but then Twitch itself drops the ball so so much. And I've just been mm-hmm. reading about this boost to boost visibility, pay to pay to be visible, and it's like what. I haven't heard of that one yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The more the more you people donate to this certain thing, it increases your visibility to help you get on the recommended page and helps you get on the front um, page. It's in the US only at the moment. It's like pay to play kind of thing. Paid to be seen. <laughs> yeah. My, pay to win the game of Twitch. My, my, my only concern with that is how much is being given to the creator and how much is going in Jeff Bezos? No, I don't him. think I don't think any of it goes to the creator. I think that's yeah, abs- I that's absolutely ridiculous. Now I'm assuming you saw that via Fred's tweet. It, a couple of people. A couple yeah, of people I, 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 yeah, I saw it on Fred's tweet. Um, and from what I've done of research today, after I saw it, um, it's. It's ridiculous. It's like it's like me going, pay me twenty five dollars, and you could be a guest on this show, and I'll get you an extra fifty views on YouTube, or I'll get an, I'll get you twenty five new followers on Twitch. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's the same principle that Facebook has when you've got a Facebook page. Oh yeah, it is got the five dollar thing that pops up it's like oh boost your post and it's like no i don't want to they will come to me naturally <laughs> I, well i've done it a few times put a post out and then it's asking me to boost it and i'm just like no no turn notifications off for that i don't want to i don't want it and then all of a sudden my email when i turn the notifications off my email gets flooded by facebook saying boost this post for just 20 pounds you could hit another two thousand people and it's like oh no i'm not gonna yeah. But what's and the point in hitting 2,000 people if only three of those people are going to come and look at your content? Yeah. There's no guarantee. And just no. because you get on the front page of Twitch, you could get on the front page with Twitch using this method, doesn't mean that all those people are going to click and join <laughs> the channel or they're going to hit like, uh, follow. It, it it might give you that little boost in your viewing figures. Yeah. But yeah. term, it's it's... That's not how you 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 hit the big numbers on Twitch. Mm-hmm. It's the gra- it's the grind. It's it's the putting out the good content, having a great community, mm-hmm. and word of mouth. Yeah. Via social media. Yep. Oh yeah, definitely. Without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, Vila, where do you stand on the differences between YouTube and Twitch? Um. Well, I used to use. Pretty much YouTube was kind of my go-to for music. Um, if I didn't own the song, I'd just go put in a playlist and use it there. Um, then I started kind of looking at different um, things to keep me entertained or something while I'm eating or 
doing different things and I found um I found a carpet cleaning stream uh where you get to watch a person um uh clean carpet and it's actually really like and then he puts like music behind it and um it's really like soothing um I've watched this one guy who goes um uh uh what's it called magnet diving uh with the the magnet and like he'll go to different yeah, yeah magnet fishing there we go um and uh he finds all kinds of weird stuff sometimes it was like um one time he, f he kept finding these like old files that were in this one river there was like 50 of them he just kept pull them up um like he's found evidence for things before and like you know he's had to contact the police and be like hey i found this like i don't want to touch it <laughs> like here you go um i've seen other streams um i use it as um as informational if i don't know like how to do a certain crochet stitch um yep. then i'll look up for that or you know good informational videos and then randomly there's like true crime type videos that pop up and it's like suggested. Um, I do like watching a bunch of dance videos that people do. It's just like, I've never really seen it as a live platform though. Mm -hmm. um, like I know that people can go live there, um, but like I only have one video on there and it's for getting this tattoo. Um, and it was for my viewers because there was a donation goal and uh, it was supposed to be done at uh, the last TwitchCon I went to, um, but they didn't have the tattoo artists because the tattoo artists were near the food court and that's no bueno. So I ended up getting it at home after TwitchCon from the artist who did my other tattoo. Um, and so I, I asked her if I could videotape just like a little bit of it to you know prove that it wasn't like a stick on or any of that yeah. but um uh yeah like i don't really i have it i did have videos um oh i did post a video of like my layla tribute video when she passed away um because it was on tiktok but um but i don't know i just i don't see it as a live platform um i think twitch is definitely better with the chat and keeping up with it you know the 11 second delay uh if you're having good internet is nice um sometimes you can get up to like an 11 minute delay and that's bad <laughs> um i know what you mean about not seeing it as a live platform like i i I've used it for tutorials to, to hack game consoles and, you know. Or walkthroughs. Yeah. Walkthroughs, yeah. But yeah. I can't stand it. If I click on a channel and it's like, you know, click on the video and it's a walkthrough for a game and it, it starts off and they spend 10 minutes hyping up their own stuff before mm -hmm. they get to the main source of the video. It's like you do that maybe in the middle, maybe yeah. at the end. Yeah. I've, I've clicked on you because I, I want to find out how to do this bit. And I can't yeah. do it. I'm, I'm, and it, there's there's a bit on um, Assassin's Creed Origins. There's some sundial puzzle I've got to solve, and I was I tried it for like two days, couldn't work it out. Went on YouTube, <laughs> and there was literally a guy just had one minute video, just showing you how to do it. No yeah. talking, no nothing over it. Just gameplay footage, no mm -hmm. sound, just gameplay footage. Boom! Thank you, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. Every other video, ten minutes of. of God knows what before it is. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, for me personally, you know, I we 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 loved streaming on Twitch. Don't get me wrong, and I said this on the last video. You know, I really want to go back to Twitch, but at the moment, it's just not the right time for us. And you know, we've got so much other stuff going on, and with uh, obviously this show. Um, I'm in the process of editing down some videos for Tanya. She's doing some um, cooking videos, and, and it's nothing like it's, it's it's nothing major. She doesn't sit there and cook a roast dinner and you know tell you how to cook a roast dinner. But it's it's little things like she made she made um, 
some millionaire shortbread, but with a Christmas twist. It had mincemeat in it, you know, and mm. the, it, it's <clears throat> it's things like that that we're, we're, we're doing at the moment because I still, I said this on the last episode, but I still have a very creative outlet. I need, I, I, I need to do something. And <laughs> when, when we we came off Twitch and we, 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 we discussed it and we sat down and we were like, yeah, look, this is the reasons why we're coming off. This is reasons we're going over to YouTube, blah, 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 blah. Um, I was like, well, I want to do this and I want to do this. And I tried, I desperately, like with all of my heart, tried streaming on YouTube and it was just like, this is not working. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. There's on. less discoverability on YouTube than there is on Twitch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was like, it just, it just wasn't working. It was like, like we have pretty damn good fucking internet here. Like we're, mm -hmm. we're on like 500 meg as it stands at the moment could possibly be going up to one gigabyte with this new merger between O2 and Virgin. Um, but on Twitch, I'd have a two, maybe three second delay between me saying something and Brian watching it or you watching it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at like a 30 to 45 second delay. I'm like, but this is on low latency. This is ultra low latency on YouTube. What is going on? Like, how can you possibly say this is low latency? This isn't mm -hmm. low latency. This is just latency. So that's why we decided to, we're going to do videos um, over live streaming on Twitch. You know, I have some Planet Zoo and Planet Coaster videos that are in the pipeline. They're 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 on the on the board to be edited. Um, but I'm not going to do live anymore. I've just I've I've just like what's the point? I yeah okay I can record the episode whilst I'm live, but what's the point? I might as well just record the gameplay and then do a voiceover with a camera afterwards in post production. It's just mm -hmm. so much easier. Um, will we ever go back to Twitch? question is will twitch ever pull their finger out the ass we have uh category number three for this evening uh which is movies and tv shows now this isn't specifically just movies and tv shows we're talking about <laughs> movies tv shows streaming services anything like that um so brian you looked overly excited there did you want to <laughs> yeah, say something <laughs> oh yeah well well we're only couple of weeks away from Ghostbusters Afterlife. I am yes, we are. hyped for that. I, I love the first Ghostbusters. I love the second Ghostbusters, even though it's a rehash of the first movie. I've gone into that on two of these podcasts now, so I'll skip over that. I like the reboot. <laughs> um, so I'm really, really hyped for that. Um, but it does look like it's going to be a cinema only and not on a streaming service, unfortunately. Um, not straight away. Yeah, I'm... We'll, we'll have to wait. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to be looking for um, a copy online from any notorious sites because it would just be unwatchable. And for that, that's a cinema trip. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Me and Caden watched the first episode of Star Trek Prodigy today. Um, oh, nice. New one on new Star Trek show on Nickelodeon. Um, yeah. I loved it. Caden absolutely loved it. He said it wasn't as funny as Lower Decks, but you know, lower I didn't deck. see lower decks yet, but we will. What we do is we we subscribe to what is now Paramount Plus. No, CBS. No, wait. What is it now? It's Paramount Plus. Yeah, it was CBS All Access. Now it's Paramount Plus. Um, um, we subscribe for like a month, and we binge watch all the Star Trek for that month. And then we end the subscription after the month. So we watched the the first two seasons of Discovery. Mm -hmm. And we watched the first season of Picard. But we haven't seen Lower Decks. And we haven't seen anything after the first two seasons of Discovery. Um, and uh, yeah, we did see a trailer for the, um, the, the Prodigy. And it looks really interesting. I'm, I'm interested to see... Uh, how that goes and having Janeway as the hologram thing uh, is really interesting. Um, 
some people don't like her as a as a captain, but I I liked all the captains, so I don't I don't have a problem with it. I th- I thought Jane was a very good captain for the situation she was in. Yes. The fact that they've they've been slung halfway across the galaxy. <laughs> And, you know, they've got to get back and, you know... She, Not like, just that, though. The, she lost half of her crew, pretty much. And yeah. Getting to the, getting dragged over there and they've got to combine. I thought more could have been done with the Marquis mm-hmm. integrating into... It seemed after a few episodes, it was all, like, sorted apart from a couple of characters every so often. Mm-hmm. Um, but, no, Janeway, I thought, was a... Was a I, the only My only problem with it was the ending. We got to see him get home, but that was... Yeah. We never got to see what happened after it, so that's what I'm kind of looking forward to. In in yeah, they kind of any mention of that. Yeah, they pretty much just kind of went. So many years later, here's what happens, and <laughs> and she's gonna go back in time and fix the whole thing. It's like what? <laughs> okay, so going into uh, coming out of TV shows for a little while and going into the world of movies, um, I'm actually really excited to go to the cinema and watch Dune. Yes, Dune. I, well, I'm not going to cinema, but I'm excited. <laughs> I, even if I don't get a chance to go to the cinema, I'll wait until it comes to, onto a streaming service and I will find it and I'll watch it. Um, it is on HBO Max right now. Really? It's only just come out of the cinema. Yeah, it's streaming for one month on HBO Max. I wish I had HBO Max. Um, yeah, it's, it's fine. I'll I'll wait for it to come out on Pretty sure. or whatever. Um, Let me just double check. It's either HBO Max or Hulu, but I'm pretty sure it's HBO Max. Cause... Yeah, I've, I've I've heard good things about it. Yeah. I've never watched the, the 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 original movie. No, never read the book. Never played the games. So I've for me, it'd be a completely either. new. For me, it'll be a new a new thing. So yeah. for me, it's going to be when it comes to Prime or Netflix or whatever it is over here. That's when I'm going to watch it, just <laughs> because for a, for a cinema trip, I've got I've got Ghostbusters. We got I promise, Cade, and we're going to see Spider Man. Yeah. Ah uh, uh, yes. yes, I'm excited for that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. HBO Max. It's on. There. I'll be on um, Amazon then over here, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, just p- purely for the cast. If, if, if like, as, like I said, I haven't played the, uh, I haven't played the game. I haven't w- read the books. I haven't played it, uh, watched any of the previous films. But it's got um, <laughs> Oscar Isaac um, mm-hmm. in it. I um, Poe from the Star Wars prequels. Uh, sequels. Yes. <laughs> Jason Mua. Mama. Uh, a- yeah, that guy. Um, Aquaman. <laughs> Um, the guy who played the professor in the four movies, I'm not even going to pr- attempt to pronounce his name because it is Scandinavian. Uh, isn't yeah. St- 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 Stilian Skarsgård. Skarsgård? I think Skarsgård's right. That, that, that's what sounds Skarsgård like. sounds right. Yeah. Um, he's in it. Josh Brolin's in it. Dave Batista's in it. Um, I'm just going down the list to see if there's anyone else. Zendaya um, is in yeah. it. The yeah. She's in Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's in it. I didn't see her. She's at the top. Uh, and Rebecca Ferguson's in it. Um, so for me, yeah. it's definitely something I would like to see. Um, yeah. I may go to the cinema if I can get the kids shipped off to someone else for the night. Scars. Um, Garsgard is the one you're talking about, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was the professor in the Thor movies yeah. with Natalie Portman. Yeah, I just um, I, I can never pronounce his first name, so it was like Stellan. Yeah, Stellan Stellan Skarsgård is the way yeah. I think it's pronounced. If I'm wrong, if I am wrong, feel free to hit me with a comment down below. Call me an idiot, and if I'm wrong, please feel free to do so. Yeah. Halloween Kills is out this year as well. Um, yes. Now, I am at the point of... Uh, I hate to say it. 
Halloween movies that have now become the same as Freddy Krueger movies, which have now come the same as the new Scream because it's another Scream movie. I saw the trailer for I it love today. Scream, though. <laughs> With Halloween, I know there's like a real a lot of movies, but with this new continuity, you literally have to watch the original Halloween, the one that came out a couple of years ago, this one and the next one. You can ignore everything else, yeah. mm-hmm. apparently. I'm not a massive um, Halloween guy. I don't really yeah, yeah. do many horror films myself. Two reasons. Um, I was about six years old and my mum put on Poltergeist, <laughs> which is where the fear of clowns comes from. <laughs> That is a creepy clown. And it really doesn't... It's like a tiny part of the movie, but it's so creepy. Burns into the into the brain. I'd forgotten all yeah. about the skeletons in the pool and all that stuff. Oh, I didn't... So, I haven't seen the new Poltergeist. Have you... Have you seen... <laughs> I want to. I... I... I, I, I have I... not seen it yet. <laughs> the thing was... A, it was a, a mockumentary that they put on an, it over here in the 90s. It was called Ghost Watch, and it was set up to be like a proper paranormal investigation show <laughs> with serious <laughs> TV presenters, and it was filmed as real. <laughs> and I didn't tweak that it wasn't real, because I never watched it to the end. But apparently at the end, they shown like the TV studio getting possessed because there was papers flying everywhere and lights falling down and stuff. And that was how they announced at the end that it was fake. Yeah. Well, I only mm-hmm. got, what, 40 minutes into this two-hour program. <laughs> so I was hitting myself. And everyone thought it was real. It got tons of complaints. It's never been repeated since. I don't even think you, you can, can buy fi- it. You can find it on YouTube. I've watched it on YouTube. I yeah. loved that when I was growing up. The, the night I will the, have to go find it. <laughs> the Halloween that that was on, I was staying at my sister's, and she went, right, you can stay up for an hour. It, it, I think it's like an hour and a half program. She was like, you can stay up for an hour. I was like, okay, cool. Laying there on the floor watching it in my sleeping bag, and like, like Brian said, it is filmed as real. So I think the 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 kids call the ghost pipes yeah. because he always banged on the pipes and stuff. And it's like one scene where the girl had got out of bed and she was banging on the pipes, and they were like, "They'll never believe that it's real." Blah blah. You know, they need proof. This that, and the other. So like, my my sister and my brother in law like, "Do you want to go to bed now?" And I'm like, "No." I didn't know. I want to see this. This is this is turned out really good, and um, it had uh, oh, Craig Charles uh, yeah. presenting it, um, and yeah, um, and it, it gets like there's one bit where the live the live feed um, <laughs> stopped and it went back a couple of hours. It was before the clock fell down, and this had happened, and something else had happened, and. And mm-hmm. like I, I like you can't I don't know if you can see that. I'm literally getting goosebumps talking about it. That this is how much this fucked me up as a kid. And <laughs> I didn't actually get I didn't actually see the last bit where it said this is all uh fake blah blah Entertainment. Blah. Yeah, this is all entertainment. <laughs> so the last thing I see was they're in the studio, papers are flying around everywhere, and Parky. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, Michael Parkinson. Michael Parkinson. Uh, mm-hmm. At this point, he must have been in his 50s. 60s? 60s, 50s, 60s. And literally, I'm going to take my headphones off for a minute, so don't say anything because I won't be able to hear you. This is literally the, the final scene that I saw. It was part of, uh, I'm Michael Parkinson. And it is. Uh... <laughs> At that point, I shit myself, grabbed my sleeping bag, ran into the bedroom, and went to sleep. <laughs> if we'll, I'd have we'll waited another five dealer. seconds, if I'd have waited another five seconds, I would have seen this has been all for entertainment purposes. Right past the rest of that and go straight on to category number four for tonight, guys. And that is random <laughs> facts and news. Now, guys, this is our usual section where we talk about anything it's complete and out of bollocks if you have something that you want to add to this conversation at a later date 
on a later podcast, make sure you check out our Anchor page at anchor.fm forward slash no roads and you can actually leave us a voice message and have your view on the show upcoming. Also, Vila, now you said earlier that you haven't seen many of these episodes and you are pretty... Um, I haven't seen any of them. You haven't seen any of them. <laughs> uh, and you are pretty nope. ignorant to what Random Facts and News section of this show is. This is yes, yes. pretty much um, anything that you found found out recently or whenever uh, that you thought was quite interesting. Um, anything in the news that has happened. We try and stick away from politics as much as physically possible. But if there's stuff that's going on in the news that's sort of interesting, that doesn't involve presidents or prime ministers, then, yeah, that, that, that's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we... Anything in particular. So, for, for me, uh, and this one is actually for you, Vera, did you know that American stop signs were originally yellow? I don't think so. I don't think so. When the stop sign cool. ori- when the stop sign originated in 1922, the America uh, the American Association of State Highway Officers determined that they were going to go from a yellow sign to a red sign because the red yeah. the red sign stood out more and was more noticeable to inform people that they needed to stop at that Pacific Road. Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, because wouldn't it? Did they have traffic lights back then? Did they have proper stop signals, mm. traffic lights back then? Uh, I don't know if they did. But no, this isn't traffic. I... This isn't traffic lights. This is you know, no, it's like stop signs yeah. at, a, at a junction and yeah. stuff. Yeah, but because like red is stop and green is go, like yeah, maybe that's why because they made the stop signs red so they're like hey let's do no, red no, and green no, 1922 i should imagine so I, I think they would have had some form of traffic lights or was it i know they had like the the traffic cops yeah yeah i was gonna say they'd have they'd have someone there at the busier junctions especially in the bigger towns and city yeah with they the flat them waving and, and stopping the, them we had that we had the, the, the... whistles yeah, yeah. It's always good. It's always good. Here's one for you, Brian. We've done an American one. Here's a British one. Did you know that Queen Elizabeth II is a trained mechanic? Oh, she yeah, she, that's what she did in the war. That's what she did Ooh. in the war. Yeah. Uh, the Queen, um, when she was 16, joined the British Employment Agency, uh, the Labour Exchange, where she learned the basics of truck repair, including changing a tyre and engine repair. Cool. So, yeah. There we go. There's a, there's a... I can't see her doing much mechanic work, though, at 95. No, like, yeah. <laughs> she, I, I, I think she's at that age now where she's like, hmm, darling, I think the, um, the, the can belt needs changing on the rolls. <laughs> Get someone to do well, it. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to meet her, though. I would like to meet the Queen. I, 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 tell, I tell you what, um, I don't really class myself as a royalist. I don't really class myself as a Republic, Republican or whatever the equivalent is. Uh, and I know a lot of people have issues with the royal family. You know, there is certain members of the royal family that I think a lot of people would rather backhand than actually talk to. Um, we can't mention presidents, we can't mention prime ministers, but we can talk about royalty. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's my show, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but no, I, 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 I think the fact that she's been on the throne as long as she has, the fact that she's like 95 years old and she's like, I ain't going nowhere. I, <laughs> you're going to have to literally drag me off this throne on... <laughs> Once I am dead and gone, you know. Well, I'm, I'm only four hundred and four. Yeah, like honestly, any other royal in the world would have got to like eighty and gone. I'm gonna retire. I'll let my son take over. No, 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 no. She's like, you're an idiot. You're a twat. You're. A <laughs> I ain't doing you. You can go away. Allegedly. 
You've got to say allegedly there. Okay, I'll bleep it. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> well, he needs as much money as he can get, don't he, so? Um, the, the, the thing I know that a fact they... to... Go on. about the queen. Oh. Um, she is a uh, very... What's the word? Uh, she very much likes Doctor Who, and she very mm. much likes Star Trek. <laughs> so, um, I thought that for the Olympics that they should have had David Tennant um, escort her to the her seat instead of James Bond, because well, in the show he was already at the Olympics in 2012, and it's <laughs> like. Eh. But yep. they, because he's Secret Service and all this stuff. The thing is, unfortunately, a good 70% of the world doesn't understand what Doctor Who is. Yeah. They, they, don't, they don't understand what it is. They don't understand who the Doctor is. So to have David Tennant, yeah, the, the core population of Who <coughs> would be like... But... <laughs> For everyone else, they're like, why is the guy from Harry Potter taking the Queen to her seat? <laughs> Barty Crouch Jr. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that, but that, unfortunately, that is where 90% of the world would be like, why? Mm -hmm. Whereas everyone knows who James Bond is. Even if you haven't watched the most recent films, you know that they, uh, Daniel Craig, is it? Daniel Craig. Yeah. Daniel, Daniel Craig. Craig. Uh, played the most recent incarnation of Bond, so that was the option they went with. So, yeah, yeah. Well, everyone knows, like, because they played the music as well, so everyone knows the James Bond music. So, yeah, I just was like, I would have liked to have seen the Doctor, even just like maybe standing in the crowd as like a little snippet. bit. It would have been fun, but that's just me. Thank you very much guys for joining us on this episode of we don't need roads my name's been chris he's been brian she has been Bela princess and we have absolutely enjoyed making this video for you if you've enjoyed any of the contact make sure you hit that subscribe button make sure you hit the notification bell as well and we will see you all next time on we don't need roads take care everyone thank you Bela. thank you